Welcome to the How to Find Your Passion Now podcast. This podcast helps you to navigate your way to the career or business you want in life. We give you the tools you need in order to move into your true purpose in life. One thing we know for sure is everyone has a gift. Are you using yours today? Now let's get started with your host, Abdul Salam Muhammad. What's going on? How to find your passion now podcast listeners. Number five episode. Today we're going to talk about procrastination. That thing that just keeps you stuck, makes you move like a turtle slow and you just don't know what to do and you can't get things done. And I put a post out there just to see what people were struggling with. And I see that this is something that keeps it keeps coming back. So today I want to give you a few tips just to help you along the way. And I also have a procrastination course that you need to be in because in order for you to achieve what you want to achieve in life, you got to work toward it. And this procrastination bug that you have is killing you. It's hurting you. Okay, number one. And this is a big one. I'm going to start this off real, real good. Accountability. You see, if you lived in a town where there was only one person, it was you. No one could keep their eyes on you to see that you go to the gym every day. To see that you eat good every day. To see that you're working on your business every day. No one is there to watch you. So if you decide to, you know what, I'm going to slack off and and not even get up until 12 o'clock noon time. No one is there to hold you accountable. And what's so funny, some of you say, well, I don't know any entrepreneurs to be in an accountability group or anything like that. Sometimes your spouse can be your accountability partner. I know for God's sake, my wife is. And you can be the accountability partner for your spouse. Why are you eating that sandwich? Why are you eating that candy bar? Why are you eating that kind of thing? Sometimes you need that. Well, no, let me take that back. Not sometimes you need that. You need that. If you look, if you ever heard of the word mastermind, masterminds have been going on since the Babylon days. If you read the richest man in Babylon, they had think tanks. Um, Benjamin Franklin was one of the ones that actually started, well, actually probably started calling it masterminds where the library was created. The fire department was created. It's going around like-minded people, right? And saying, hey, this is what I plan to do this week. And then you need somebody to ask you, okay, you got it. You say you want to make, by the end of the year, you want to make six figures, right? That's That's what you say. Okay, so the accountability partner is not supposed to be your friend. They're supposed to put you in a high seat and ask you, well, why can't you do seven? Well, I said six. Why can't you do seven? Well, I, I, I guess I could do seven. Okay, when you show up that week and you come in front of your accountability partners and then they're like, okay, so what have you done this week? Hmm. You know what? I had a slow week. I just kind of, I had to fix the car. No, 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 no. What did you do this week? If you have to face somebody like that on a constant basis, you're not going to want to look like the douchebag. You're going to feel like, you know what? I'm not really doing that great of work, <laughs> which is probably why I'm not getting the results that I want. So we touched that enough. Accountability groups, partners, get it in your life. Get somebody that's not afraid of you. And then let me just say something, too. You need to get off of your soapbox because some of you men and women don't like to get told what to do. You don't like to for someone to correct you. How dare you correct me? I know I'm wrong. I know I have a beer belly. I know that I could work out. But don't you tell me that. That's rude. No, it's not rude. You need someone to push you. Right. So that's one. Number two, block out four hours, no matter what. Boy, when I applied that one 
into my life blocking out four hours big now some of you may ask what do you mean how is it big man i used to think it was all about staying up and and and, and doing the more hours because I, I found out that the work i would do at night wasn't really productive yeah i was up doing tasks but i didn't have any energy but when i block out doing four hours which is what i'm doing now four hours of podcasting and creating podcasts that's when my life changed so you got to block out whatever your thing is and when i say thing thing not with the s you know i was offered an opportunity this week well somebody said hey um i got an opportunity for you and i'm gonna have to say no because i cannot divide my energy anymore with multiple tasks and trying to get this and and start over and put energy here and start over and put energy there no the thing that you're trying to get going may take 10 years to really get going on a national level but you put 10 years of hard work day after day after day in that thing that's how you get the kobe bryants the lebron james and people like that the the warren buffett's Warren Buffett is, um, I think Warren Buffett is like 90s, in his 90s now, and finance. He read every book when he was 12 years, by 12, every book of finance in the, um, the Omaha library. So that long in one subject, you're probably going to be good at it. So block the time out no matter what. Four hours least, the least. And I promise you, you can get a lot done. Um, number three. Look, there is no special pill or anything that you can take for procrastination. You know how you beat your mind in for, as far as uh, procrastination? You do it. You just tell yourself, I'm going to block out four hours and do it. And then when that little weak mind of yours starts saying, well, um, I need to uh, just take a break. Nope, can't do it. Switch off. You're turned off. You're over there. Can't do it. I'm staying here. Every time it tries to do something, divert it, divert that negative mind somewhere else and start working harder. And pretty soon you can train yourself to the point where you don't even listen to that mind anymore. So don't try to think that there's some magic trick and spend time and, and many hours researching Google. What's the magic trick to beating procrastination? Do the work. Do the work that you love doing. That's that's really the magic pill. Spend time on something you love doing. When you're doing things you hate, like if I was sitting here doing a podcast on geology, I probably wouldn't have no motivation whatsoever. But being that I am doing something that I like to talk about, then that's easy. Doesn't It only takes minutes to put something together. So that's it. Uh, number four. <laughs> When you're waking up in the morning time, don't hit that snooze button. Don't become a fan of the snooze. There are some of us who have the habit of when that alarm clock goes up, eh, go back to sleep. I got at least 10 more minutes before that snooze goes again. Eh, I'm going to do it again. Why? Why not as soon as the clock goes off, get up? And some of you say, well, that's hard. What up? Nope, get up. Get in the habit, put it across the room, get up, go over there, get it. If you have a certain time that you want to wake up. But if you get in the habit of hitting the snooze, then that's you're mentally making yourself weak. You know, one thing I can say to my wife, when that alarm clock goes off at five o'clock, boom, she's out of there. She's never really had that um, thing of fighting the sleep. Some people can just, boom, do it. You know, for me, I have to work at that. You know, that's just something that you, you have to, I have to have that mental conversation with myself. You know, because I already have the overanalyzation type mindset and I have to shut it off. Learn to shut it off. So don't become a fan of the snooze. Learn to get back up and get the day started. Because that's what it is. When you start hitting the snooze, that's a... That's a attribute of procrastination. 
Another thing, number five. Let me go with number five here. You got to have a purpose in life, people. What are you working toward? Are you working towards something big? If you don't know what you're working toward, why would you even get excited to wake up? Maybe you need to spend some time there making life a whole lot better. Because when you get up excited, that's a great feeling. You know, I, I find too many people that when you when you go to their job place, they look upset, angry, and you're thinking to yourself as a customer, like, man, did I do anything wrong? And they're peed off. Then you ask, well, how was your day? Great, but better at 4.30. Ooh, 4.30. You don't like your job. So you're waiting to 4.30 so you can have fun. It's like your job is pretty much a prison for you. And those people probably don't have purpose in their life. So they have to wake up and go to that crabby job every day. And that's their life. And some of them get stuck there because they be, they learn to live off of the paycheck, don't save anything, and they have to spend more time there really than they actually wanted to. I had a buddy of mine. We used to sit back and talk about our goals. And actually, it's funny. I got fired from this job. One of the best things that happened in my life because I could have got stuck. And uh, I called him up one day. This is in Washington State. And, you know, he had this. I said, oh, I'm just going to do this job and go to school and blah, blah, blah. Now this guy has uh, three kids and still at the same job. Can't leave, leave now because now he is financially tied to that job. And boy, was that job depressing. It was working at a criminally insane institution. There was nothing but depression there. Uh, staff getting attacked. I, I had three people that I knew, security officers, that killed themselves. Three. And these weren't old people. They were young people. People that I had conversations with, and I had no signs. They say sometimes that people that work in those fields are actually looking for help themselves. And that could be some truth to, truth to that. Okay. Well, let's get out of that depression spot. Uh, six. Let's just say breaking things down into small goals. So if you, have, if you wanted to do 100 push-ups a day, you're like, man, look, 100 push-ups a day, that's a lot. That's, what, that's the first thing somebody is say. And the only reason they'll say that is because they don't look at it as small things. What if you did 10 push-ups every 30 minutes throughout the day and you did 100 push-ups a day? Now, it doesn't seem such like a it doesn't seem like a hard goal. But when you say, "Oh, I do 100 push-ups a day," it sounds like, "Wow, man, that's a lot of push-ups." 100? They're thinking like, oh, you sit there and you do 100 push-ups at one time and then that's it. No. Learn to break the things down in small little chunks. And that will make the task at hand not so difficult. All right? And number seven, ask for some freaking advice. Is there anybody in a niche that you're interested in that's killing it? Because I always, some people say, well, I'm not smart enough and I'm not this. But I promise you, whatever it is that you're trying to do, there's somebody that's doing it. Can you give them a call? Can you give them an email? I remember I've picked up the phone and called people before and said, hey, can I ask a question? I remember I was, uh, when I was interested in becoming a CFP, Certified Financial Planner, I would call CFPs. Say, hey, you know, um, I'm not calling for any financial advice, but can I ask you a question? of what it's like being a CFP in a day. What's a CFP go through? I've made many calls like that. And you know what's so funny? They'll tell you, because people, they, they like things like that. Like, oh, maybe their spouse doesn't listen to them when they go home and talk about CFP. So they would love that somebody is actually, well, I, I show up work at seven o'clock and I do my thing and they get excited. So ask for advice. You know, or ask for advice from someone who is not a procrastinator. That person you see on a treadmill that is killing it, that looks like they're about to die on the elliptical machine, and then they go on a treadmill and look like they're going to die over there. Ask that person, say, look, how did you get over that hump? What do you do to fight pr 
procrastination. They may look at you weird at first because like, wow, you why are you asking me a question like this at the gym? <laughs> but then they would say, oh, you know what? This is how I do it. I had to fight it every day. And a lot of times you'd be surprised like, wow, that's not really a hard thing for them to do. I think I'll do it. And number eight is when you start your work, try to have uninterrupted activities. Like don't let just someone come into your space and interrupt you. If it's your spouse, if it's your kids, if you try to set up some, some boundaries where you're like, look, I'm going to be in here banging it out for four hours. Can we see each other four hours from now? You know, and sometimes, you know, when you're in the cubicle at the, at the corporate America type job or corporate job, you know, you're going to have that chatty Cathy or that person that's right beside you that wants to talk. Just say, hey, you know, um, I know we're good friends, but I want to bang out this talk. I mean, this uh, work here for about four hours, four or five hours. And then after that, we can chat a little bit. But I, I just want to focus here. That's how you're going to get it. You can't have divided energy. Can't have it. So those are eight tips on uh, how to fight procrastination. Like I said, if you want more, I have a procrastination <laughs> procrastination procrastination course that I am putting together. It's almost done. Um, check the course out. It's a good investment for some of you who may struggle in that area. So with that said, guys, thank you. And until next time next podcast episode signing off